Today I'm going to give you a quick demo of porting a file from MATLAB 3 to MATLAB 4. At this point, MATLAB 4 has been a pretty experimental development. We've just been trying things out and moving things across in a sort of ad hoc way. But we think it's about time to start porting systematically, which will mean moving entire files across, uh, making sure that the new file in MATLAB 4 is a pretty good reproduction of the original file in MATLAB 3, and then after that, trying to keep that file in MATLAB 3 pretty much frozen uh, until the rest of the port is complete. At least, uh, further changes on the MATLAB 3 side will have to be reflected in the MATLAB 4 side. So what I'm going to show you today is the whole process, uh, selecting a file to port, porting it, and uh, pointing out a few gotchas about uh, current gaps in the way porting works. Okay, to do all this you're going to need three different repositories. Uh, first of all, you'll need uh, MATLAB 4, where we're uh, porting to. You'll need MATLAB itself, where we're porting from, and you'll also need a, an auxiliary repository called MATLAB 3Port, which contains the artifacts that the program MathPort produces. MathPort is a program that uh, attempts to automatically port. It's far from perfect, but the output is much easier to work with than starting from scratch. Okay, let's get copies of each of these. Okay, and now I'm going to open up all three of those repositories in VS Code. Okay, uh, let's have a quick look at MATLAB 4. Uh, as you can see, the um, well, everything is under a folder, also called MATLAB, uh, and then there are a bunch of directories which basically follow uh, what you're familiar with in MATLAB 3. There are a few extra directories. There's one directory called MathPort, which contains a little bit of extra information that helps MathPort run, but you can leave that aside. There's a folder called init, which contains uh, things that used to exist in Lean 3 core, uh, and we've now moved into MATLAB in, case, in places where we're still relying on them. But other than that, the directories pretty much follow the layout from MATLAB 3, although of course for now there's not very much there. To decide what we're going to port today, we should go across to the MATLAB repository. And before we do anything else, I'm just going to do the usual steps of um, getting cached OLEANs and verifying that everything builds. Great. Uh, in order to get a sense of what we need to port, I'm going to first of all use the lean project tool to generate a little graph of part of a dependency tree. Uh, to use this command, we need to be inside the source directory, but then we can run lean project import graph, tell it a file that we would like to get to. Uh, perhaps today we can say algebra.auto.ring. We're not going to try porting that today, but let's imagine that we're hoping to port that soon. Uh, and then if we also just add the flag uh, exclude tactics, that'll make things a little bit tidier. And then uh, it, I find that it's easiest if you just specify a PDF file as the output, uh, because then you can just look at it immediately. Okay, so here is, let's zoom out a little bit. That's the entire dependency tree with algebra.auto.ring at the bottom. Of course, MATLAB continues on for miles and miles afterwards, but it starts all the way up here at logic.basic. And essentially what we're gonna have to do is work our way slowly through this graph, uh, porting a file once all of its dependencies have been ported. That leaves us with the challenge of knowing what's already been ported, and unfortunately right now there's not really a systematic way to do that beside reading through the MATLAB4 repository or coming and asking on Zord. I happen to know 
that uh, some files here, uh, algebra.group.diffs and algebra.group.basic, have just been ported to Mathlib 4. In fact, right this second, the PR is still open. But noting that those are fully ported, we could just look around this graph by hand and try and work out if there are other things that we could port. That is, we're looking for another node here, uh, which has no input imports besides things we know have already been ported. Uh, looking around briefly here, the only thing I actually see immediately is data.nat.cast.diffs, which I think we're not going to pick as an example today because it really intrinsically is about casts, which have changed behavior between lean 3 and lean 4, so it might actually be a bit of a tricky one. Unfortunately, otherwise, everything I see here has other arrows coming in from somewhere else, so I'm actually going to whoop, uh, move to a different region of the, the graph uh, here. Um, where uh, I know that uh, logic.function.basic has more or less been completely ported. And we can see here logic.isEmpty is a good candidate because its only import is something that's already been ported to MATLAB 4. Now, in future, uh, I can imagine that we might get some beautiful CI that helps us with this, uh, some process that keeps track of things that have been ported or at least have PRs open for them maybe highlights those nodes in green to show that they're done, and then automatically computes nodes which can be ported based on things that have been. Maybe it can show those in, in some other color to, uh, to get going. Uh, of course, we're also going to occasionally run into files that are difficult to port, perhaps data.nat.cast.defs, uh, and that are going to require special attention. We perhaps could highlight those as well with a little warning color. Okay, in any case, I'm going to move to porting logic.isEmpty today. Uh, first step, maybe, is to go uh, over to MATLAB 4 and just check that logic.isEmpty doesn't exist yet. Sure enough, it's not there. Uh, and so our very first step can just be to create the file. Now, uh, our next step is to go across to MATLAB 3 port and find the corresponding file. So remember, MATLAB 3 port contains MathPort's best effort attempts to, um, to port everything from MATLAB. It's far from perfect, but it's still pretty useful. So all I'm going to do is select the entire content of this file, I hit copy, go back across to MATLAB 4, into our new is empty file, and paste it. Now, there are a couple of things that we're going to have to do by hand that, in principle, MathPort could do for us. Um, hopefully, maybe in future it will, uh, when someone gets to it. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to run you, few, run you through a few essential steps that are entirely mechanical. The first thing is just to change these import statements from MathBin to uh, MathLib. And the second, actually, is going to be de to delete this import MathLib.Tactic.Protected. Uh, this is a tactic that we're probably not actually going to port. It's something that MathPort itself can achieve uh, because of new functionality in Lean 4, and so I'm just going to have you delete that for now. Okay. Uh, hopefully in a moment, Lean will catch up and compile this file. There we go. Uh, we have lots of errors, but that's not at all uh, unexpected. Um, but at this point, we are just going to start going through and fixing the errors one by one. Okay, first of all, this, the, there's this protect proj attribute, and I'm just going to delete that and replace that with the protected keyword on the field of this class, something we couldn't do before. Uh, and now I'm not going to worry about anything else that's going on. I'm just going to search for the red squiggles and deal with them. Uh, the next one, you'll notice that the, there's an identifier here uh, pmt.alim with a little x after it. That x is something that MathPort puts in uh, to flag that there's a, a, a collision uh, between something it's ported and something that it's already found in MATLAB 4. Uh, but for our purposes today, I'm going to just tell you to delete every occurrence of that x. And for the most part, when you're porting, you're pretty safe to do that. OK, that didn't get rid of the error. And we can see why, actually, that uh, you'll notice that 
in Lean 4, we're switching to a different casing convention, and what used to be is underscore empty, or lowercase, has changed to the camel case is empty. But p empty now looks a little bit wrong. Uh, we almost certainly want to spell this as p empty with a capital E. Now, I'm just going to change this by hand for now. Uh, there is a mechanism to instruct Mathport uh, about um, naming errors it's made, uh, but I'm not going to cover that in this little demo today. For now, I'm just going to fix things manually. If you do a few, a few instances of this porting, uh, you should learn about that mechanism. Okay, let's just jump on to the next error. Um, here, unknown constant is empty.false, and you can see that there's just been an inconsistent um, <laughs> case correction here. The field has been capitalized, but then when we use the field, it hasn't been capitalized. Uh, I'm going to make the decision that probably the field shouldn't have been capitalized. Um, okay, going on, skip any warnings. There's an error down here on an eliminator. Uh, I'm not going to spend a long time working out exactly what's going on here. I'm just going to take the attitude that, well, elaborating eliminators is often kind of difficult. Let's take the easy way out and just make everything explicit here. So I'm just going to write is empty dot elim and then uh, try and work out what arguments I need to give it. Uh, h will be the second argument and then I need to give it a motive and the trick here is that uh, we've got a constant family. So I'm going to write here fun underscore goes to beta uh, and okay now Lean's happy so off we go. Um, Let's see what's happening here. So it says unknown identifier non empty underscore prop. Let's just have a look over. Actually, at this point, probably the, the routine thing to do might be to jump back across to Mathlib itself and have a look at the corresponding theorem. So uh, let's open up is empty and jump down to wherever that was. Um, yeah, non-empty underscore prop. And we can, of course, because Mathlib all works, uh, we can uh, jump to definition, find out where that is. So that's in logic uh, non-empty, which I thought had been already ported in Mathlib 4. Perhaps it's missing or perhaps something else has gone wrong. Let's go back and investigate why we're not picking up non-empty underscore prop from Mathlib 4. First of all, let's go to non-empty. Have a look for it. Sure enough, it's there. All looks fine. Uh, so I suspect that uh, just the import tree uh, hasn't quite worked out, and so let's just add by hand uh, mathlib logic non empty and see if that solves our problem. Well, it actually did solve our problem. There's still an error in this theorem, but it's a different one. Uh, it's just a matter of unsolved goals. So this seems a bit crazy. The unsolved goal is not p if and only if not p, which seems like exactly the sort of thing simp should deal with. Let's just check that. And sure enough, uh, if we just let simp run unattended, it closes the goals. So probably just this simp only needs to be slightly adjusted as we move from lean 3 to lean 4. Uh, let's just work out what simp is doing here. Uh, to do that, I'm going to, for a moment at least, uh, import mathlib.tactic, uh, and I think it's called simp trace, which is Mario's implementation of simp question mark for lean four. And let's jump back down here, put a question mark on there, and see that it suggests we use if and only if self, which is a very reasonable lemma. Let's just add that to the simp only set, uh, remove that unnecessary simp question mark now. And we can see that there are lots more errors here uh, all also involving simp -onlys. So let's just be optimistic and hope that the same fix will deal with all of them. And you can see that as I go through, the errors are disappearing behind me. So it seems our optimism uh, was reasonable. Uh, and you can see here, there's another uh, casing issue that probably we should alert Mathport about so that it doesn't keep making that same mistake in future. 
a little bit further down, uh, it looks like we're missing an, another function here, function dot extend underscore apply prime. So again, let's jump back to Mathlib. Uh, sorry, in is empty, go all the way to the bottom, find that, again hit F12 to see where it was, and it was in logic function basic. Okay, another file I thought was completely ported, so let's go back to Mathlib 4, open logic function basic, and um, sorry, what was it called? Extend underscore apply prime. Extend underscore apply prime. So it looks like it wasn't, it isn't actually there. Uh, perhaps logic slash function slash basic wasn't in fact 100% uh, ported and we should put that back on our to-do list. In any case, um, all that we really need to do is go back to MATLAB 3 port, open logic function basic there, find extend apply. So all we need to do is uh, grab the, the theorem, extend apply prime, Copy that, jump back to MATLAB 4, and put it in where it belongs. Uh, we need to remove a few of these little annoying X's, but otherwise that just looks like it works fine. And so before I leave this file, I'm just going to um, fix the long lines. Um, we'll talk in a moment about indenting and style. Great, let's leave that, go back to is empty. Unfortunately, VS Code, for me at least, uh, isn't recompiling this file when I change one of its dependencies, so I'm going to have to uh, restart the lean server. For... Uh, ah, great, that error has gone away, and in fact, we've got rid of all of the errors. So we're not there yet, but at this point, we should be feeling pretty optimistic. Um, we, we should be confident that we're going to get this file ported. Uh, let's deal with the warnings first. Uh, let's see. Ah, so it's the, it's the unused variable warning, uh, which we deal with just by replacing the unused variables with an underscore. Uh, another one here. Uh, this one's actually a little tricky. Uh, Lean doesn't like it if we use a plain underscore there. Uh, so the trick we can use is to change the variable name to something which starts with an underscore, which I think has no effect besides telling the linter to go away. Uh, but otherwise, we can just go through, find these unused arguments, and replace them with underscores so that Lean is reassured that we really didn't mean to use those variables. Great, we're making further progress. <coughs> no compilation errors and no warnings. This is pretty good. Uh, we now should have a quick look over the documentation, see if there's anything we need to update. Let's remove that simtrace tactic. Uh, you'll notice, of course, that MathPort wasn't confident enough to go and edit the doc strings, and so we need to make a few um, case changes uh, there. Now, I could try and search and replace for lowercase is underscore empty, but uh, that's not actually going to be very profitable because you'll see that even though MathPort has changed the, the, the case convention for the class, we still have lots of lowercase is underscore empties in theorem names. And our intention is just to leave things like that at the moment. Um, we can back shed over case conventions on a global scale in MATLAB 4 at some other time. Uh, I do see an instance of is empty here that's actually a bit messy. This, I think, is actually the name of an instance, which was probably generated up here somewhere, maybe it was here, uh, and I don't really want to go and work out that name. Um, this example actually here is kind of useless, probably shouldn't be here anyway, so I'm going to take the lazy way out and just uh, delete the comment. Uh, on we go, uh, is empty, is empty, okay, looks good. Um, if we PR'd this as is, we would get into a little bit of trouble. The linter would complain at us just because there are some long lines. So let me just show you how to lo break long lines. Uh, the convention in Lean 4 is that the bodies of declarations get indented by two. Uh, if you have a by or a do that starts off the whole block, you can leave that by at the end of the previous line. 
Uh, and here we have the slightly more complicated situation where the type signature needs to be broken over a line. And the convention there is that we indent uh, by four and then return to an indent by two for the body of the theorem. Okay, um, now this possibly isn't perfect, um, but for the purposes of a demo, I'm gonna call it quits there. The final thing that we should do is actually turn this into a PR. And so um, what do we do? We uh, just make a new branch. Uh, add our new file and add a commit message that just says we're porting, what is it, uh, logic slash is empty. Great. I'm not actually going to send off the PR right this second, um, but you should do that. Uh, and assuming that in the near future we work out some mechanism to label files as having been ported, uh, you should do whatever is required to store that information. Importantly, once this PR has been made and accepted into MATLAB 4, we're going to have to mark this corresponding file in MATLAB 3 as more or less frozen. That is, any changes to the MATLAB 3 file will only be accepted uh, if we uh, make corresponding changes over on the MATLAB 4 side, because we're going to need to keep these files in sync while the rest of the port happens. Okay, uh, great. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, we're only just getting started on this whole process, so please come hang out in Zulip and ask, for, ask questions about things going wrong. Um, one thing maybe that I didn't really say here, um, but should have because it'll come up in lots of files, uh, if you have to do something as a workaround or either because a tactic's um, missing or, a, uh, or some behavior in Lean 4 has changed, please leave copious comments. Um, it's fine also in the doc string uh, to add a whole new section labeled porting notes to explain what you've done, any troubles you ran into, so others can pick up. Um, and in particular, if you run into tactics behaving badly or Lean4 itself behaving badly, um, please come report them on Zulip, make issues if you're confident they really are bugs, uh, because this whole porting process is only going to work if we're simultaneously fixing uh, the tactics and Lean4.